Hello, we are here in the hot air balloon. As you can hear, it's pretty loud. We are firing up and we are about to take off the ground. See you at Speedy Falls. High gasoline production is leading to lower gas prices and experts say prices will only continue to drop. By the holiday season, it could be below $2 a gallon. Hundreds of patients housed here at one time, with men on one side and women separated on the other. Police have been searching the home here at 1 Mozart Street. No word yet on a motive behind the shooting, which is still under investigation. Breaking developments this noontime, we're learning more about a deadly stabbing that happened last night on the campus of Binghamton University. The victim has been identified, the suspect still on the loose. Thanks for sending some of those warmer oh, yeah. temperatures our way. <laughs> now, we gotta ask, Tim Tebow's popularity spreads across sports, record-setting attendance wherever he went last season. We wanna know, could Tim Tebow start this year with the Rumble Ponies? Buckle up, Southern Tier. It's official. Tim Tebow is coming to Binghamton. The Binghamton Rumble Ponies just made the announcement about an hour ago. Think you'll ever make it to Binghamton, New York? I hope so. There? I hope so. I love traveling and I love, like, if I went to Binghamton, I would want to know, like, where do you eat? You know, like, where can I get the best lunch? Free food, and if you want, you ate the most to get some cash. So I like that. Yes, not that bad. Can't be that. That's great. And now, Matt, I know last year, was your first year actually even eating a Speedy, is that right? Yep, first year. So how is it a little different, obviously, a little different than a hot dog? Thanks for waking up with us here on 12 News this morning. I'm Claire Kerr. Yeah, I'm Scott Cecina. Sounds like a great day to jump in the pool, right? Absolutely. You know what? I think meteorologist Brian Trader did challenge us to a cannonball competition yeah, you, you know, I think he's right. earlier this week. So, uh, Brian, is this a good day for that competition to happen? Well, I had the chance to go inside those latched doors. Take a look. The doors may be closed, but the legends live on. It's the only designated National Historic Landmark in our area. It's a place historian Roger Luther gets a lot of questions about. I've heard it referred to as the castle on the hill, and I, I didn't really know what that meant until I actually got up close to it. What actually went on inside those castle walls? It was a city all to itself. Founded in 1858 by Dr. J. Edward Turner and opened to patients in 1864, the New York State Inebriate Asylum was the first of its kind in the country, aiming to cure alcoholism. The yeah, attitude was that it was thought of more as a resort for fairly uh, wealthy downstate uh, alcoholics. And then a mental hospital. Mental illness was seen as uh, some sort of demonic possession. They you know, were being cursed in some way. Dr. Michael Lavin says the asylum gave patients a life away from society. They could grow their own food. They could basically live their life there without really having to leave or necessarily interact with the rest of the population. Hundreds of patients housed here at one time with men on one side and women separated on the other. A story that stands out, one patient sat and shuffled his feet back and forth for years. And indents in the floor still remain. The, the intentions were wonderful. But I got to figure, as the population grew, as more and more people were crammed into these facilities, yeah, there were things were abused. I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's no question about it. In attempts to help patients, doctors sometimes took extreme measures. Physical you know, restraints and uh, procedures, lobotomies in ways that uh, are now what we would consider really kind of backward, drilling holes in people's head to let out these fluids, for example, which often led to people dying. Dr. Lavin also points to electric shock therapy, which was performed in a much less humane method than today. It's kind of sad. And imagine uh, the workers, you know, not having really adequate kinds of treatments to offer. At its peak in the 1950s, there were roughly 3,500 patients. Now, thousands are buried on the asylum grounds. The hospital stopped housing patients in the castle in the 70s, and it became home to offices until in 1993. A portion of the facade collapsed, and it has been empty ever since. Certain legends may be disputed, like the Masonic Eye said to follow you around the chapel and look down on the altar. But there's no mistaking the feelings this place still carries. Energy that motivated Binghamton University theater professor Elizabeth Moser. I was inspired to make a theater piece after my first visit to the castle. I could feel the lives that had lived there, uh, the lives of people who had worked there, who had visited 
this grand building. Today, the building isn't the same, and neither is the treatment of mental health. I think going back, you kind of learn from things, but, you know, in the current state, we still have things to learn. As for the future of the castle... Everybody in this community wants to see this building saved. No question in my mind. And there's hope that those locked doors may reopen. In Binghamton, Claire Kerr, 12 News.